Praise God, praise God. This is Prophetess Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day. I pray that, hey, you are, you're doing what God have called you to do. So, if you see, hold on, I have to make sure everything's all right up in here. Okay. All right. Praise God, praise God. So, if you see my title says, Prophets and Anointed People Have Hard Heads. Anybody going to say, come on somebody, I feel the power of God, I'm going in. So, let me go ahead and repeat my title, I can't see it. There, hold on. I'm a, I am don't, I don't even see um, anyone. Let me know that you're here. Let me know that you're here. I'm going to have to go here. Look like. Hmm. Alright, I'm just going to wait till some of you actually come on in. Okay. All right. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. All right. So. Okay. I see y'all now. I see y'all now. And that's it. I had to go on my phone just to see y'all. Okay. So. So if let me let me close this. All right. So if you see my title, it says, "Prophets have hard heads." Prophets have hard head. Prophets and anointed people, excuse me, have hard heads. So much sometimes that God has to literally break us down. Come on. I feel the power of God up in here. Am I lying? <laughs> Come on. Because I'm, I'm on one today. I'm on one. I mean. I'm bad. Woo. Hallelujah. You, you, hit, let, ooh, calm down. Let me get it. Let me get it. I get excited because God is good. I'm going to say it again. God is good even when it's all bad. Romans 8, 28 says, those that good and bad work together for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So let me break that thing down. All through the Bible, there were hard things that the prophets had to go through and anointed people. Notice what I said because it's not just prophets, it's anointed people. If you are anointed, you can't tell me you haven't been hard-headed. You can't tell me you didn't have to hit your head. You can't tell me you wasn't a disobedient. You can't tell me God didn't have to break you down. You can't tell me. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. You can't tell me because I've been there. See it and still see it. David. Samson. Joseph, Abraham, the list go on and on. Anointed people of God love God with all their heart. Don't you love God? I mean, we love God. And let me tell you why I'm going to walk this thing out. Let me tell you why God chose you. Because you're hard here. Because you're not going to just give up. Oh, I got to walk this thing up. We are literally like a pit bull in the spirit. I mean, we be ready. We ready. We stay ready. And he uses that same character you had out in the world. The only thing is, he says, now come in. Let me clean it up. Let me calm you down. Because <laughs> you know we wild. Come on, somebody. I'm walking this thing too. So God has to come. He calls you into the kingdom. He teaches you integrity. He teaches you self-control. He teaches you how to watch that mouth. Ooh -ooh. He teaches you how to watch that face too. Because sometimes some of your faces still need to get delivered. You know, you really love God. You'd be looking at people like, you, you know, come I got to walk this thing out. Y'all know it's true because I got to tell you what's stopping the body of Christ from going to the next level. You. Us. Sometimes we're too strong for our own good. So God has to allow something to break you down. That's why you go in a valley, out of valley, in a valley, out of valley. I'm not going to say that I'm scared of people that are always just bubbly. I, I, that means you're not going through anything. That means you are not a threat. That means you are not packing but lacking. Come on, somebody. I feel the power of God up in here. Because when you are a threat, everything going to get thrown at you sometimes. Your family, your friends, your husband, your wife, your lover, your dog, your cat. Don't, 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 don't come on, somebody. This for them grown folks up in here today. It seems like everybody just be, you be like, what the heck didn't happen? And then with your good self, I started getting out of character. Because let me tell you something. God doesn't remove everything from your life when you get saved. Mm, you thought he did? No. That's why you still have those tendencies. That's why people backslide. Our position is to stay prayed up. Our position is to stay in that word. Because that word pushes down that attitude. That word pushes down that stink out. 
that word pushes down that cussing, that fussing, that, you know. That's why he says, be in thy word. Study to show thyself approved. Because now you have to have a spirit of self-control. Mm -mm, here it goes. Sometimes you disqualify yourself. Another point. Prophets are very disobedient. Ask me how I know and I tell you so. I know God. So all I got is God. So all you got is God. Truth be told, but hey, I ain't gonna open that one. But sometimes we get in our own little, I don't know if it's feelings. I, don't, pff, I can't figure it out. I mean, we'll be tunnel vision. We'll be going the right way. Then all of a sudden, I call it the dangling carrot effect. We see some, and you be, you be looking straight. I ain't gonna look, I ain't gonna look, I ain't gonna look. And then if you look too long, that's why vision is very important. What, what, what you allow to captivate you, whether it's a man, a woman, money, a job, you, you know. You have to be very careful. That's why he says, don't look to the left or to the look to the right. That's why he says in Joshua, the whole chapter, first chapter of Joshua. Meditate in that word day and night, and then you will make your way prosperous. Because if you just look, Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody been down there. It, it could be lust. You look too long, David. While she would start looking good. Say what you want to say. It's called a reprobate state of mind. In this season, God is trying to get you away from you. This is the season to look at the man or the woman in the mirror and be brutally honest with yourself because we could blame other people for so long until you want to deal with you. That's from level to level of spiritual maturity, from level of growing in integrity and honor, or even being a Christian in any faucet. You're going to have to grow to the level of self-control, facing reality, which sometimes the reality is you don't need to go over there. You don't need to be there, friend. You don't need to be with them. <laughs> I'm walking heavy up in here. You want to know why you don't have that breakthrough? Because you haven't did what God told you last time. Because a small disobedience is still disobedience, said the Lord. We keep wondering what's happening. May I present to you and suggest to you that sometimes it's you or what you didn't do. What God told you to do, and you're still trying to figure it out. You're still trying to make it happen, Captain. Which is called manipulation, which is witchcraft, period, in the story. When you're trying to make something happen, and it's just not happening. We've all been guilty of it, truth be told. So God sent me up in here, the spirit of God, not, you know, because some people like to be, oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Go back to that last thing. Whenever you find yourself in a situation, or you went off course, or you've backtracked, or you've backslide. Always go back, what is that last thing that God told me to do? What did he tell me to do? Who did he tell me to leave? Who did he tell me to accept? Because we get, uh, and we want to do our own thing. Come on, somebody. Churches do it all the time. You put in position who you want to put in position. You will bypass somebody anointed for somebody that you like. I just said something. We don't want to be controlled. There it is. That's why the Holy Spirit's not controlling the church anymore. Because you're not allowing him to. It's protocol. And sometimes you don't know who to call. Mm. You're so busy looking for popular and, and fame and this and that. Instead of looking for the wisdom and the discernment and the power and the presence of God. That's where we all at. That's where we all let God sit. And in order to see revival, like we've never seen it before, it starts first in the church. Judgment is in the house of God. Judgment is in the house of God right now. That's why you're seeing so much stuff happen. Because people out there need us in here to get it together. Time out with just conferences. Time out with just trying to be this and that. Are oh, you anointed to deliver? There it is. Are oh, you anointed to deliver your brother and sister? To lay hands on yourself? Are you filled with the power of God, the presence of God, the anointing of God? There it is right there. Because if you're not, then you're just playing a game with yourself. Because God knows all. Hallelujah. And in this season, God is doing whatever it takes to pull that out of you. He's relocating some people. He's separating some people. He's allowing some hard things to happen to some people. 
Because God needs you to get that out of you because it's not about you. It's about the kingdom right now. And the kingdom is looking eh, not like God. Let's just be honest. No unity. No word. Most of you, and look, this is not a bastion session about you, 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 you. No, no, no. The same thing I say to you, I apply to my own self. Okay? As a matter of fact, it comes to me first, truth be told. Anytime a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, a prophet, or anyone have a message, it's for the person themselves first. Because how can you deliver it if you don't know it? Hmm. Or experience it in some shape, form, or fashion. I tell people all the time, I started this in, I, I, I want to say 2014 or 2015. When I was going through, oh, actually it was 2012, I'm sorry, <laughs> getting young. When I was experiencing a divorce. And I felt so, you know how you feel. It's like, oh my God, things are falling apart. But really they were falling together. I'm just going to say it again. Because somebody needs to hear that. You think everything's falling apart. God did that. Everything is not the devil. God allowed it. As a matter of fact, let's be real. The devil can't touch you unless God allow it, Job. The devil can't do anything without going to God first and say, can I test him? Can I test her? And most of the time God said, Go ahead, touching out their life. But it'll feel like it. It'll it, oh, it get heavy up in here. But God. God said, I, I'm trying to push that thing out of you. You, you know that sin within. I, I'm trying to push you away from some people. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get you out of that thing that you got yourself into that you think you wanted but you didn't. How many times you pray? I mean, I, I, I've learned something. Be careful what you want. Mm. Be careful what you ask for because what you think you want, you may not want. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you right now. Because God will give it to you, Samson. He'll give you that Delilah. He'll give you that Bathsheba. And, and, and then it'll expose you. David said, it is good that I've been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. Some people get mad with God. God, why you allow that to happen? God said, I'm holy. I'm sitting on my phone. You did that. I just allowed it. Come on, somebody. He said, you did that. A lot of people get mad at God. When you go back to that thing, you did that. God didn't do that. God just allowed it. We get mad because God allowed it. But God said, don't worry. I'm not going to let it take you out. I'm going to let it build you up. You see, most of the time when you get hit, ooh, y'all got to catch this because I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you what God is doing. Most successful people, you know when they got their best ideas? Most people that's anointed, you know when they got anointed? When they got hit the hardest. Because when they got hit the hardest, two things going to happen. You're going to run from God or you're going to run to God. God, help me. Help me. I fall in and I can't get up. And God said, I got you. I got you. I got you. See, I allowed this because you was playing with me. I allowed this. This area, I need you to get it together. That area, I need to get you there. Yeah, you get the drift. Because truth be told, when we read the Bible or even our lives, we've always sinned against God. Hallelujah. Y'all know it's true. So in this hour, God is saying, stop being hard-headed. I need you to be obedient. You wonder why this is not working and that is not working? I stopped it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I let them do it, but I stopped it. <laughs> I let this happen. Yeah, yeah, they did it, but I allowed it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah up in here. God will allow it to hit you to the core of your spirit to change your spirit. I must admit, I y'all yeah, know I've been getting hit since last year. I'm talking about real hit from the depths to this to that. And if I truth be told, I, I, you know, I, I tell y'all not to reiterate it because trust me, water under the bridge, I'm not even lying. It's, now, what did you want me to learn? What did you want to take out of me? What did you want to put in me? What did you want me to do that I didn't do? Come on, somebody, you got to be real with you. Because you could be like, hallelujah, all day long. But when you get here, everything is exposed. Because people going to see how you operate and who you really are now. You see, you really want to know a powerful leader? Let him get hit for real. When I got hit this last time, yes. But I had to look around. I had to look inside. I started ministry on a level I've never ministered before. Keeping it real. And we don't like it. You know, I, I keep bringing up Joseph for a reason. 
because we're really in the spirit of Joseph and Joshua, the two J's. Somebody write that in the comments. We're in the spirit of Joseph. Where well, you're going to get hit. It's going to be family. It's going to be friends. It's going to be husband. You're going to get hit by them. Don't get mad at those people. Don't talk about those people. Don't. That, that's our first reaction. Come on. We're going to keep it 100 up in here. Our first reaction is like da 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 But when you pull a back and you go straight to God and you get on your face, God say, yeah, I allowed it, but let me show you what's really going on. And if you real with God, you're going to say, I see, God. I see. But most people are living in a facade in this hour because you're after stuff. <laughs> God said they want the blessings, but they don't want the lessons. Somebody write that in the comments. You want the blessings, but you don't like the lessons that come with the blessings. Because mm. everybody want to go to the elevator at 12, but everybody want to stop on each flow. And honey, in order to grow, you're going to have to stop on each floor. Somebody write that. In order to grow, you're going to have to stop on each floor. Sorry, this is not no microwave. One, two, two. You could do that online. But in the kingdom, God's going to have you tested on each level. Are you ready to go to that next level? This is not just about money. Because if you are if you don't have wisdom and discernment, it's going to, sleep through, it's going to slip through your fingers anyway. That's why he prepared Joseph from the pit to the palace. We like to say that, but let's talk about what was in between that. It was heartache. It was grief. Joseph was lied on. Joseph was done wrong. But Joseph kept a, a, a pure attitude. He didn't get mad at his brothers. As a matter of fact, even when they knew who he was, and he says, I am Joseph, and they start to weep, he said, wait, 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 no, 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 stop, stop. Because what you meant for evil, God turned around to my good. How many of you get guilt, condemnation, and want to pay back revenge. And revenge could be even, let's be real, posted on Facebook. We've all done it. And that's the wrong way to do it. I, I'm not the only one going to be up in here honest. You live and you learn. But in this season, God said, I, I need you to practice self-control. I need you to practice obedience. Somebody write them down. I need you to practice honesty. Some of y'all be lying Christian. You know you be lying. Stop that because a person with wisdom and discernment knows. We just don't say nothing. And it could be a stranger. God to let them read you or break you down like a faction. God is preparing us for his return. And I've said this so many times before, and, I'm, and, and you could look it up or whatever. Every prophecy has been fulfilled before the Jesus return except one. And that is, the Bible, the gospel must be preached through the whole world. When that is fulfilled, that the, the sun just came through here from nowhere, right? When that is fulfilled, Jesus Christ will come. Now, no one knows the hour, the date, or time. But until then, we're supposed to be about kingdom business. We so busy building up stuff and trying to get this so we can show people that we've arrived and we've made it. Are you saved for real? Are you touching the unclean thing? Can you speak life to your brother and sister? Can you lay hands on your brother and sister? Be real now. Because you have to be anointed to do that. Anointed and appointed. Most people are tainted in this hour, says the Lord. And God is trying to get you to be consecrated. To go back to your first love. Come on, somebody. What is the first? You know who the first love is. And when you first got saved, you want to tell everybody. We don't even witness the way we used to. And I'm I'm being real. I'm being real. I had I had stopped too. Like I was witnessing, but not like I used to. So when that happened to me, it brought me back to my first state. Somebody write first state. Say, God, bring me back to my first state. When I first fell in love with you, I was humble, God. I, 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 I wasn't moved by what I saw and what I wanted and what I felt. Oh, who walking with me up in here tonight or today? It'll bring you back to your first state, those hits. And that's why God allows them. God loves every last one of us. And he wished that no man or woman should perish. Even these children out here just killing each other. You can say what you want. That's a territorial spirit, whether people like it or not. Yes, these emotions mixed up with a spirit. They could just put mental health on it all day long. It's still a spirit. 
Now write that in your little book. It's time for truth. You can't just put it on one spirit because that's not what just if, if if it's just that, then why are they killing each other? You can't that's not that much anger in the world without a spirit of rage. So now this is where the church come in. We need to start praying over our cities, our streets, our homes, businesses, every place I walk into now, I pray. God protect everybody in here, and including me, because you don't know when stuff going to pop off, and that's where we at. The spirit of fear has come in, and it got people wanting to run away. <laughs> no, we're the spirit of Joshua. We run too. What's up? What's up? This what we doing? The enemy tries to hit you. And I need you to touch, I need you to really follow me. Because I feel the anointing very heavy. The enemy, God allows the enemy to hit you to where you feel like you, you have no strength. That's what's going to happen, okay? That has happened. Then the enemy goes in for the kill. That's when you find out if you're anointed. Because either you're going to fold or you're going to come back up and come back for more. That's all you got. I'm still standing. I'm still here. He still has me. I heard a preacher say, and I'm going to reiterate it. David was so much of a victor and a warrior. He said, Satan, check this out. Even if I make my bed in hell, God is with me. That's what I want to leave with you today. God is with you. I don't care where you go. I don't care what people do to you. I don't care what God allows Satan to do. God is with you. So don't ever feel discouraged to where this is it. This is over with. Because I don't care. And I'm, still, I'm telling you, you could feel like, woo, it get real heavy. Let's be real. God was with Daniels in the lion's den. Can you imagine being in a lion den with a, li a real lion? Daniel, Daniel was, who he was a strong one. Because I don't know how many people would have just looked at that lion and, and then passed out. Like, God closed the mouth of that lion because Dave, Daniel had so much faith. That's what we got to get back to. The, the, let me tell you how the body of Christ acted. Y'all... I got I to gotta walk this thing out. Y'all acting like they got more power than God. Y'all acting like COVID got more power than God. Yeah, I say that. In order for the power of God to hit this earth like never before, we got to start giving him the glory. And that's our story. God, you are still the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is none other. I don't care who want to be God. I don't care who play like God. Oh, hallelujah. You don't hear me up in here. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. They can lie on you all day long. Because let me tell you what's happening. Y'all don't understand what's happening. So let me get this. They're trying to decree and declare. If you believe in God and the Bible, there's something wrong with you. The devil is a lie. We may believe different, but that doesn't make me different. Hallelujah. Y'all hear what I just said. You, you got to catch what's happening. Because it's happening in the natural and in the spirit. You got to know who you are. Children of God, don't forget who you are. The enemy is trying to steal your identity. I've been on that for months. Because if he steal your identity, you see it's called the power of agreement. You got to see yourself as God sees you. So anytime you stop and you look to the left or to the right, you have just broken your agreement and your covenant. Now they can come in and try to confuse you. Yeah, y'all getting it. And if you allow that spirit of confusion, you'll start believing the lies of the enemy in every capacity. In the midst of pain, adversity, and in an emotional state, that's when the enemy tries to convince you that you're this and you're that, and you're not who God called you to be. And that is in that state, your weakest state, you must affirm and confirm, I am who God says I am. I, I, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I, I know what you're writing. Ugh. I know what you believe. 
I know what you're trying to prove. I feel the power of God. But God. <laughs> God said, I'll turn that thing around. God said, I'll turn that thing around. It'd be a divine reversal. I'll reverse that curse. He said, but whose report do you believe? So too many of you believe in what they say. <laughs> I believe the report of the Lord's. Whew. I, had, I had to write that thing. Y'all know it. Y'all see what I got on here, huh? Stay strong. Stay strong in this hour. I'm going to say it again. Stay strong in this hour. Put it in your spirit. Stay strong. Your strength is in God. Because we flesh. We a mess. But God will use that mess and make a whole message out of you. It's not what you go through. It's how you go through it. Go through it with integrity. Go through it with love. Don't get out of character. The enemy wants you out of character. So you can say, uh-huh, I told you she wasn't a Christian. I told you she wasn't a Christian. I told you. Yeah, you get the point. I am who God says I am. Hallelujah. All righty. I just, I, just, I just had to encourage you. Let me tell you something. Y'all haven't seen me for a while. You know why? I got hit hard. And when you get hit hard... You have to grow on your face. First of all, repent. Well, I ain't did nothing. Repent. You did something. Maybe not that. And I already told y'all, and I say it again. I was supposed to move, and I didn't move. There it is. I ain't never going to lie about nothing. Always been a woman about mine. Good, bad, or indifferent. So God allowed what he allowed. And I accept it as a woman of God. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't like it. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not bitter. Thank you, Jesus. Let it grow me. Thank you, Jesus. Let it not me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. Do what you want to do, God. I don't have to like it. But if it's going to push out who you need me to be, then thank you, Jesus. With tears in my eyes. Ooh, with people leaving me. People coming, going, whatever, whatever. Hallelujah. I love you. <laughs> That's what they all did that truly love God. They, they didn't blame this and blame that. They say, God, you're God. Yeah, y'all getting it. Y'all getting it. Woo! I felt that. I felt that. If you, you, know, you got to go back and listen to this one. Because I'm, I'm not kidding. I, 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 y'all know I've been fasting. We actually stopped the fast. It ended yesterday. Y'all, I have to keep going. And some people say, oh, you shouldn't say, be quiet. That's what's wrong now. Religion and not kingdom. I'm kingdom. I'm going to tell you. In order to last, you must fast. And I, I and at one point, I stopped doing that. In order to be strengthened in the spirit, you got to pray in the spirit. You got to go in the spirit. You got to connect with God because God says, those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Most people don't even understand the truth because they didn't get in the spirit. Period. End of story. So, God bless you. God keep you. Y'all know what time it is. Roll our soldiers for that is truly who we are. Praise God. Oh, P.S. Um, prayer partners. Ministry partners. I know it's been a minute, but I, I need your support. And, and look, I'm not going to be the devil is alive. If you commit it, God bless you. If you do it, God bless you. If you don't, God bless you. I still love you. So, uh, we're going to ride this train because it can't ride no more. <laughs> I love God. I'm going to say it again. I love God with all my heart. Now, we don't bash people that don't love God. We don't condemn people that don't love God. Our position is to pray and love people back to life. I need y'all to really get that. Don't be cutting people down and condemning them when God don't. God said, I'm married to the backslide. I don't even know why I'm saying that because too many people are doing it. Stop doing that. Stop breaking your brother and your sister's spirit. I don't care if they do bad things to you. Pray for them. Because they're going to get hit anyway in the spirit. You know that. So pray for people. Stop talking about people. Pray for them. I don't care if it's you. In, in ministry, out of ministry. Pray more, talk less. God bless. I love you. I really, really do. Oh, yeah. I'm back. Uh, I thought you knew. <laughs> he tried it. He tried it. He been trying all my life. All my life I had to fight. 
but I must stay with God. Mm. God bless.